Um, you are back for part two, potentially, and if you uh, don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and watch the video I posted on Monday, where I basically go on a cultural field trip with Luis. We really talk about um, how our culture has influenced our day-to-day -day. So let's get to it. When we recorded part one, we didn't know the status and the update and just everything that was going to happen um, with the news. If you've not seen it, just go ahead and Google D-A-C-A, uh, which means that uh, there is a, a lot of immigrants who have come out of the shadows and are going now back in the shadows um, into hiding. For me, this topic today was very hard to hear. It hits home closely. I come from an immigrant family. My mom and my dad and all of my my family migrated here from uh, Mexico and El Salvador and because of their hard work and their passion to really seek the American dream um, I am here today the stats I won't bore you with them and you can google them and, and you can find out more about what DACA is I'm not a spokesperson by any means um, I'm just sharing my experience um, and as you'll see, I am joined by Luis again, and we talk about some stories about immigration. And immigration spans from the East Coast to the West Coast, from uh, Latinos to people who've migrated from Pakistan, from everywhere, all over the world, have come here to America for one reason or another. Of course, I can't be ignorant and say that with migration, there are people who have the wrong intentions, and those are the people that we really need to look out for. But the innocent ones who came here for a better life and who've been separated because of immigration, that is really unfortunate. Um, so I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you go ahead and uh, share this video if you find that there's any enlightenment when it comes to immigration. With this last video that I posted on Monday, so many of you have been so positive in, in your message and the encouragement. And so I thank you for that. And thank you for joining me on this journey of me doing me and, and you've watched. So uh, again, thank you. One of the other things that we really wanted to talk about um, in, in, without getting political is this topic about immigration. Uh, I think that is a, a huge part of our culture and, and sort of our journey, our parents' journey, and how it defines how we see this world that we live in. Um, so tell us, Luis, do you have a story that you would share that sort of for you put immigration on sort of on your radar, even though it has been for since you were born? Right, right. So um, recently uh, I did I did a podcast and I interviewed someone, a student at Harvard University. She lived in Arizona and she was an immigrant. She came from, from Mexico at the age of three with her parents and she attended Arizona State University and she, she finished her bachelor's there and then she got accepted into Harvard. During that, during that entire journey, she was an immigrant. She was the first immigrant woman student at Harvard and she graduated her master's from, from Harvard, and then wow. she's now pursuing a PhD at UCLA. So I got to interview her and hear her story. And there was a there was a point in the interview where she, she started crying at one of the questions that I asked her because it entailed her family. And, and she pretty much shared with me that her family was still separate and they weren't able to make it to her Harvard graduation. No. They're not gonna be able to make it to her UCLA graduation. So to her, that, that whole term immigration to her means Fat means separation and how um, families are kept apart from yeah. each other. So that's kind of the definition that she gave me for what immigration does to her and what it, it's still doing in her life. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a story that I can share, a more recent one where I can really see effects of immigration yeah. and the extents that it gets to. I think for me, um, my family, they're all uh, immigrants. I had the privilege of, of being born here in America and you know, having sort of, to some extent, um, that ease of transition of, of just having papers and being in a place that's stable. Any family that has migrated from Latin America is really out just to, out for a better life. And I think that any person who migrates to any other country they're generally seeking a better life, that right. dream. And so for us, it would be the American dream, right? And, you know, my parents have been here for quite a while. And thankfully, my mom has uh, had the privilege or the ability of becoming a, a U.S. citizen. Um, but, you know, there were struggles and there are still, you know, I do still have family who may be undocumented and, you know, they, they really hustle. They really do everything that they can to provide for 
my cousins who Just are for food on the table. Exactly. And that's what my mom did for years where she was a resident and probably before I was even born, she didn't have her papers. And so anyway, it's just, I think every story is different. For me, immigration is such a vital part, again, of who I am and knowing that my family, everything that, that they did to be where we are now. And obviously if it wasn't for that, if they hadn't migrated, who knows if I would have been born. Right. I think you, when you talked about how every story is different, I think that's such a true statement because um, you're never going to find the same situation twice because every person has gone through so many different things just to either get residency or get uh, their citizenship and yeah. like in the case of Sylvia, she it was literally her entire education educational career that she had to overcome obstacles. She had to raise $80,000 just to get into Harvard and she was going to school but hadn't raised the money yet. So it was really interesting to see how that was her story and, and she overcame that and now she's she's becoming, she wanted to be a lawyer but then now she wants to be that person of aid for those people who are going through what she had to go through. She wants to dedicate herself and her life to becoming sort of that tool that people can can come to essentially to kind of not have to go through what she went through or if they do they have someone they can go to. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting and I feel like a lot of people who who have gone through that become those tools because it's no one wants to be in that position where you don't know what to do who do you go to so these people um like sylvia she she's she's doing that you know she's becoming that tool that people can go to that was a cool thing for me to witness and i think yeah, it's a cool awesome. thing for people to to something that's cool for them to have yeah and all that i think the theme of migration or any struggle that anyone goes through is persistence mm -hmm. and being able to through those struggles like that character that you build driving back here when we were on the freeway i looked up and it said persist and so that's just a story of all these migrants and again any other struggle that anyone in america and any part of the world uh, faces mm -hmm is the stories that they will tell and, the, and how those stories will help the next generation. If you find yourself in some sort of struggle or anything, just be encouraged and persist. Keep pushing forward. Even though that sounds easy to hear even now, I encourage you to keep pushing forward. Yeah, for sure. Okay, amigos, that is all. Luis, thank you so much for making the avocado, for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun sharing with you guys our culture. Our culture. And uh, any questions, go ahead and comment below. If you've not done so, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Tú sabes. Ya tú sabes.